Good morning. We've just left that beautiful campsite by the river um, and I nearly got hit by a tram on the way out. So be careful driving around Burn. It is dodgy with the trams, but my fault. Um, anyway, Lindsay's just popped into Lidl to get some supplies. Um, but I wanted to touch on the fact that diesel here is 235 Swiss francs which is just about two pounds and a penny. So not quite as expensive as when I filled up in the UK on the service station at the motorway, but nearly. Second place, I think, on this one. Right, we are heading into the Alps today. First stop, we're gonna go to the Grimsel Pass and have a spot of lunch. Driving through Switzerland, it's beautiful scenery, it's beautiful lakes, the countryside, the mountains, and I'm trying to record, and this bloody GoPro is giving up the ghost. It's telling me SD card error. So I've lost some footage for the last couple of days of the driving footage. So I'm gonna format the SD card and try again and see if I can record some of the scenic driving for you because it is beautiful out there. The lakes, the mountains, and everything. I've forgotten how beautiful Switzerland is. A few moments later. No. SD card error again. Maybe it's just the SD card, I don't know. But fortunately I've got another GoPro, so we'll give that a go. stop for lunch at the top of the Grimsel Pass. It is a bit windy. I did try to get the drone up and it was blowing all over the place so um, I soon put that down but have a look at the view we've got down the valley here. What an amazing view that is. I love doing these driving roads. One of the first years we came out here I drove I think eight out of the top ten um, driving roads in Europe just purely to do the driving road so we've come back to do a few this time and this is one of them next we're going to go and do um, the James Bond one the Furka Pass there is two ways to do it there is a way you can go and you drive onto a train and that goes through the mountain or you can drive the road so we're going to go and drive it same as I did last time and hopefully I'll be able to get the drone out and uh, get some nice aerial shots so we've just had a lovely BLT at the top of the Grimsel Pass and um, Lindsay's like I'm gonna have a coffee before I get off. Um, we have bought a new coffee machine. Thanks for all, um, everyone that got in the comments with the recommendations. We went for Sage in the end. We wanted to keep it fairly clean and keep to the capsules. So we got an espresso machine and we got the Sage Creaster Pro, I think it is. No, it's not all the way down, it won't do it now. It's ah. too high, so it needs a smaller cup. It is a cracking machine, makes a lovely, lovely coffee. And it's all touch screen. Any of you can show them on here, Ed. So you can just scroll down and choose what coffee you want. There we go. It's not sponsored, I had to buy this by the way. But there we are, a Sage Create, I think it's a Creaster Pro is what we bought. Right, knocking the coffees up. Oh, multiples is it? Well, we might as well have one as well. Right, that's lunch done and coffee's done. Um, we're now gonna do a bit of a drive. I'm gonna, I wanna drive the Furka Pass again. I drove it a few years ago. It's the one out of um, Goldfinger, James Bond Goldfinger. There was a bit of a car chase, I think a four minute car chase along the Furka Pass. Some stunning views, so definitely an awesome driving road.
tell you what, that's committed parenting. We've just driven past two parents and the, the man had a trailer on his bike with kids in. That is something special and a little bit crackers. I think it needs a Roman Radford sticker, don't you? Ta-da! It was a bit windy, but I couldn't help myself. I had to get the drone up to get a flyover of the van. And just look at that view. And next up, we drove the Gothard Pass, the third one of the day. But don't worry, I'm not going to put you through any more drive-in footage. But I will, however, put a link in the description for all these three drives. They're all very, very awesome. So if you're out this way, highly recommend you give them a go. OK, we're still in Switzerland, and I've only got 70-odd miles left in the tank. So I figured let's, uh, let's fill it up. Yeah, it's confusing because it's not even in English at all. So I have no idea. Of course, that's in Swiss francs. So let's see on my card how much it works out to be in pounds. Go on then, how much was it? 154.20. How does that compare? What did I... I think you paid more in the UK. The UK is still winning. That's a lot though. It's nearly as much. And there was 70 odd miles left in the tank still, so... There was in the UK as well. It's about 78 miles left. Right. Okay. Coming a close second to Switzerland. And the guy inside was lovely. Are you going on a trip? Where do you go? I want to. <laughs> so of course I tell everyone where we're going. I should have given him a sticker really, shouldn't I? Right, onwards, let's find a park up for tonight. Good morning. Good morning. Well, what a driving day yesterday turned out to be. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm still tired now, actually, even after a good night's sleep. Right, isn't mm. it? Um, Lindsay bought me a book for Christmas 2014. It was the Top Gear Best Driving Roads of Europe or the world? Europe, I Europe. think. Europe. And I, I, th I think it was top 10, I'm not sure. Top driving roads. Anyway, I um, decided I would take the family um, across many of them driving roads in 2015. So we drove out here, one of our first European tours, this was, I think. Yeah, bear in mind that the, uh, the Top Gears guys did it in grand touring kind of cars right. <laughs> so you know we scaled that up a bit and i brought out the motorhome and the family to drive these roads so we headed out yesterday to do the grimsel pass yes um and i had this earmarked and then we did the fokker pass it was absolutely beautiful i think it's the first day that we've been driving so much that i've not picked up my book at all the views were just so stunning. beautiful so stunning the whole way up <clears throat> um, and going up's easy enough. Going down with a five-ton motorhome, it really tests the brakes. Yeah. So I'm always on and off the brakes, pumping the brakes, not to overheat the brakes, but still the smell of brakes. <laughs> Quite smelly. <laughs> and the clutch. <laughs> I feel as well we might have smelt clutch. <laughs> that was, yeah. Was some of that, so... Uh, so yes, it's going to need a good service and a good looking at when we get back. We had a couple of moments where Steve looked at me and said, would you drive this? I was like, in my car, <laughs> not in the motorhome, absolutely not. Challenging, but I love it. I yeah. love it. I love doing that. So it was a real big day for me yesterday. Didn't do a great deal of filming for you guys. Managed to get the drone out at the top of the Fokker Pass and get some great aerial shots to mm. show you guys what it looks like there. We'll put a link in the description if you're interested in, in taking a drive in these roads, but um, the motorhome's fine. Absolutely yeah. fine. Just take your time, take it easy. Now, we don't like to go and pay campsite prices if we go and turn up at six, seven o'clock just no. to park up there the night. Not only that, a storm was brewing. <laughs> so, Lindsay found a park up actually at a castle and we had a look around the castle. What an absolute gem. The oldest part of this castle dates back to the 13th century when the Rookers family came and they were merchants from Coma and they came and built the castle then. There are walls, ancient walls, that still encircle the original hamlet. It is flipping awesome and it's free to stay. But then it just did not feel right. It wasn't level didn't feel right so we decided to move on moved on up the hill that was challenging that's when I burnt a lot of clutch out to be honest with you to another castle at the top of the hill okay we've just been told we can't camp here the night and that we are going to get moved on if it doesn't feel right we don't like it so we moved on can I just say I read the sign in Italian I read it 
Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, because we're in the Italian part of Switzerland. Uh, we which are is, so close to the border. Which is another thing that is int- really bizarre about Switzerland, where there's no standardization on language mm. and signs and stuff like that. Really is. You know, if you're in the Italian side of Switzerland, it's all in Italian. People speaking in Italian. Um, yeah, a really interesting country. Mm. You know, there's no standardization on no. the language or the signs. And it looks Italian too. It, it, you can feel the difference right. from, the, even though we're right in the Alps still, you can see and feel the difference from, say, the, the German speaking areas. So that's, it just feels a bit more, almost Venetian, for, not this actual park up, because we're quite, we're in a car park in an industrial part of town. So, yeah, not wanting to pay the campsite prices, it's Lindsay was trying to find us a free park up. Yeah. In the end, we drove a little bit longer, and there was a storm brewing, and we found an air. So the kids just watched a movie, we watched a bit of YouTube. Yeah, first bit of YouTube of the journey. I Can cooked a whole it. meal inside, that's the first one and it was the trip. really, really stormy last night. The rain was coming down, mm. it's lovely when the rain's pitter pattering on the motorhome. But warm rain, wasn't yeah, it? it? Went it was outside nice. a little bit. Mm. So yeah, so it was a different evening last night. Didn't film anything there. Had a lovely mm. chilled evening in the motorhome. But today we're going to go and check out that campsite now. So I don't know how expensive it is. It's probably not going to be cheap. Mm. But um, it's by a lake. You might have seen the subscribers we bumped into um, in the Euro Tunnel, and they're parked right over there. What's the chance of that? We're in Switzerland, and we've managed to choose the same park up. What's the chance of that? Right, we did rinse the batteries last night. Have a look at this. We had the aircon on all night and the batteries are down to 13%. So we need a campsite tonight to top the batteries back up again. So we're at Camping Resort tomorrow. Or Camping Tomorrow Resort. We're not booked here. And I've got Lindsay's famous pink bag with all the passports in. Let's see if they've got a place for us. Hi, you speak English? You have a place for a camper van? One, maybe two nights. Two adults, three children, yes sir. Okay, we have two options, 30 and 32. And as with most places in Europe, they give you what uh, what they got free. Go and have a look and see which one's suitable. So we're going to do that now. So there's 32 and 30 is on the end here. I think we'll take 30 because it's a bigger pitch. And probably for one night. It's not a cheap site, this one. One thing, as with this campsite and many in Europe, it's just, I said, one or two nights. Pay nothing now, pay when you leave. So he's checked us in for two nights, but we can check out after one night and just pay for one night if, if we like. Um, another thing, Harry and Eddie, 14 and 16, have to pay tourist tax so they're not classed as kids okay i just had a quick walk around the campsite looks fantastic and the facilities are top notch i think i saw five stars on the way in and it could well be five stars uh, also i think we were very very lucky to get a pitch it looks to be pretty full and he only gave me two choices of pitches to come in so um, i think we got very lucky there and we've come early so that's probably played a big part in it Lindsay and i's got a lot of work to do i've got video edited to do as usual lindsay has got some accounts work to do Lindsay has done some washing, as you'll see, and she's doing the accounts, all right, love? Yeah, I'm trying to dry my washing in the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got to put some ad blue in. This would be about the third or fourth time I've put ad blue in. We've done 3,000 miles, 3,500 miles. As if the fuel weren't expensive enough, we've got to put ad blue in as well. But fortunately, I brought this with us, and I got this off a mate at a good price. Right, that's 10 litres added. I've got another five litres in there. Fingers crossed it's enough for the trip. It is crappy weather out there. We've checked into probably one of the most expensive campsites that we're going to stay in on this trip, and it's raining. I mean, it's great for us. I'm catching up with video editing, and Lindsay's doing accounts, but for the kids, hey, eh? Not much to do, George. Well, I just had to go out in the rainy weather to check Mum's washing. Oh, I'm catching up with oh, the washing it's as well. Oh, definitely yeah. not my pants. Not just my pants. But drying it's been a challenge out there in the rain. Hopefully the weather will perk up and the kids can get out on the lake out there because it's a cracking lake out there. More washing, love. Yes, sorry I didn't take everyone washing, but, you know, my smalls. <laughs> and your not-so-smalls. <laughs> hey, what are you saying? <laughs> Where are you going to hang this lot now then? I don't know, it's not going to dry though in this weather. They specifically state that you can't be hanging washing lines up at this campsite, don't they? Yes, for aesthetics. So we've been making do with our octopus and hanging things on hangers and under here. Hey George, what do you want to show me? The big van down there. Goodness me, it's bigger than Neville's isn't it George? Way bigger. Wow, it's a big overland. Look at that. 
fantastic truck. George, the tyres are as big as you. Wow. That's a big truck. You're not going to fit this in most campsites, I wouldn't imagine. It is huge. And look at that. Two spare wheels on the back as well. Of course, ladders to get up and do anything. Wow. That's going to be worth some dough, that has. It's in beautiful condition. It looks like new, isn't it? Huh? Jeez. Do you want one? Yeah. <laughs> right, where are you going to show me next, Georgie? Um, I think the park and then the lake. Okay. Now this is really cool. It's like a apartment that you can rent at a campsite. It looks a luxury. And this is a lake. So you can actually rent stand-up paddle boards and these little boats. So earlier I was walking by and I saw people climbing on those platforms and jumping off, I don't know, like a little island. So you want to do that? I do, I do. Let's see what the weather's like tomorrow. Mm. It's very moody today and look, you can see clouds in the mountains over the back. Whilst me and my partner in crime I've shown you around the campsite. It's just reminding me I haven't shown you the facilities yet. Should we show them the facilities? Let's go. Okay. Facilities review. The toilet facilities here are pretty top notch, to be honest with you. Over here, two Elson points up the stairs. Washing area here. Showers, gent showers. See what they're like. So you've got wash basins over here and showers over here. Toilets are in here. Your rhinos in here and here. Ladies' toilets over there. <laughs> Ladies' showers. Ladies' showers. We're not going in there. Nope. And more cleaning facilities. And this is where Lindsay did the washing earlier. So that was a quick look around the facilities. Although I was getting some strange looks waving the camera around the toilets like that. But you've also got some chalet style things here and here to rent. And there's a jewelry store that you were looking around earlier, wasn't there? Yeah. And here is all the washing that Lindsay's hanging up to try and keep dry underneath the awning. So we've been plugged in the electric here at the campsite since this morning. It's now seven o'clock nearly at night and it's still charging the batteries. We're certainly getting our money's worth of electric by charging our batteries at this site if we're not getting our money's worth using the facilities because of the weather. This campsite is all about the lake. Unfortunately, the weather's been shocking today, so we've not got to it. It is starting to brighten up and there's blue sky over there and look how beautiful this location is. It's gorgeous. So this site was pretty cool, especially for the younger kids, as they did have evening entertainment. This evening they had a clown on and it was making the kids laugh. They also had the trampolines and they seemed to be very, very popular. And the play park was pretty cool too and George enjoyed playing in there. This Dodge Hemi, I heard it earlier and it sounded fantastic. I've never seen one, but they look great, don't they? And they sound awesome. Not good for the environment, mind but it sounded awesome. At the opposite side of the, the campsite to the lake are the seasonal pitches and they look pretty darn comfortable. But one thing you just noted to me, we are of course the only English family here. Yeah, I probably, it's a lovely site and the facilities are great and the entertainment's good, but I probably wouldn't recommend this as a destination for English speaking tourists. There's just, there are not many people to have conversations with and there's not so much going on. All the entertainment for the children's in Italian or German, basically. Right, and uh, the things I've seen is in four languages and not one of them is English. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, I have seen some English. Okay. Yeah, I have seen some English, um, but it's usually tucked away. Um, so I just don't think there's a lot here. I'm, you're great. If you're good at having conversations the way we do, like talking loud and using your hands um, <laughs> and finding the Dutch people. It's always worth finding the Dutch people. Isn't right, it? there are some Dutch here and they yeah. all speak English. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely geared up more for Italian speaking and German speaking people. Even further back from the lake, beyond the seasonal pitches are the tent pitches or tiny tent pitches, just one and two man tents. Um, this area is fab. It also seems to be the the, the play area, the recreation area, there's a volleyball court on sand and um, ping pong and there are some barbecues and little picnic areas and the ancient building behind me 
looking at that is beautiful is also the spa so you can get a good massage if you need i'm sure steve's already given you a tour of the toilet blocks is that right i did do the other ones earlier but i was getting some funny looks so i did with random <laughs> yeah you shouldn't take a camera in the toilets <laughs> my love <laughs> um but there is a second block here on the site and there's lots there's lots of um showers lots of loos and a good amount of washing up areas as well facilities are top notch five yeah. star i'd say the facilities really are beautiful here. Good morning. Finally, the weather here in Switzerland has taken a turn. So George and I are going to go for a swim in the lake. I get to enjoy my morning swim with the, uh, the ducks. I don't know if you can see that, but it is so clear. Yes, dude. Come on. Okay. We're swimming in the lake. It's not even nine o'clock yet, or maybe it's 10 o'clock. I don't know. It's early-ish. Um, but look at the view of where we're swimming. Hey, George. Hi. You can't beat a kid bombing, can you? I know last night I said I didn't really get this place and that if you're looking to spend time and meet some some people that you can speak English with, this isn't the place. However, that lake, oh my God. <laughs> I don't need to speak English to anyone. I'm quite happy bumbling along with my French and my Italian bit of German <laughs> speaking loudly using my hands I this... didn't I did not experience the lake this morning how was it oh it was gorgeous absolutely gorgeous it was such a beautiful temperature we spent most of the time out on the pontoon George was jumping off until he slipped and hurt his toe oh, bless him yeah but no it's been great well I've just checked this out um, at 11 o'clock we need to be off the site by 12 o'clock um, but the price guys of this one are you sitting down <laughs> okay um, this one was 118.20 um, Swiss, which is 102 pounds 29. Ouch. Okay. That is the most expensive site I think we've ever stayed at. Yes, but the sky is blue. We're surrounded by mountains. The lake is clear and fresh and beautiful and. But 102 quid, hey? Out. Right, let's try and get a free stop tonight. Let's do an air tonight. Mm. Got a bit of driving on the road now. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Join us on the next one. See you.